Hey everyone, so today we're going to take a look at a couple different ways to play back sequences. I'm going to keep going with the random sequencing ideas from part 6. This time, we're going to get them to play back quantized. Now there's one way to do this that makes sense to use. There's another way that's totally ridiculous, but it was kind of a fun experiment. So in essence, this video isn't about making randomized sequences, it's more about showing off two features of the mother. The first is the sequencer playback direction. The second is the tempo input patch and all of its different options. In the spirit of making this series as complete as possible, I needed to talk about the tempo input patch at some point. So although I never would actually use that function for this application, I think it illustrates the utility in an interesting way, so I'm going to demonstrate it. Let's take a look. Let's start off with the useful function of changing the playback direction. Here's my sequence. It's two octaves of C major. You saw that it was playing forward like normal, but we can change that. You can play the sequence forward, backward, a pendulum, back and forth, or totally randomized. To adjust this setting, press both arrow keys and press the corresponding step one through four, forward, backward, pendulum, and random. Let's try the pendulum mode. Now let's do random. So in part six, I showed you how to use random voltage from the assignable output to make a randomized sequence. So we had to use other utilities to offset and attenuate the voltage. And in the end, we would still need to add a quantizer to get it to a particular key. Here we don't need to do that. We can get the notes to whatever we want. If we want the sequence to play randomly over two octaves in a particular key, just program in those notes. It's so much easier. So it's good to know those playback option tools exist and how to access them. But now, on to the totally ridiculous fun stuff. Listen to this. This is another pseudo randomly generated sequence that's in the key of G minor. It spans three octaves. To make this happen, I'm going to go back into the global parameters and set the output to random step sequence. But there's a couple of other controls that we want to adjust in the setup mode. And that's what I'm going to cover today. As you can see from the patch, I'm going into the tempo input jack. So we have, just like the assignable output, we can assign what this jack is used for. So let's go into our global settings. I'm going to push the two lower left and the two upper right. And I'm going to navigate to page eight to start off. So remember how I said that the global settings were grouped into pages that all kind of went together in some sort of logical way? For instance, page one is all about the assignable output. Page eight is kind of a catch-all for parameters that don't belong with others. Each selection in page eight can be toggled on and off. I'm not gonna go through each one now, but if you look at the green buttons, you can tell that option one is on, option two is off. For right now, I'm gonna turn your attention to option five. So the default setting is on, and we could leave it turned on or we could turn it off. What this setting does is it changes the amount of voltage that this jack accepts. So when it's on, it only accepts zero to five volts, which is just positive volts. If we turn it off, it'll also accept negative voltage. So it'll go from negative five to positive five. For our setup, when we go in there, I want it to be able to accept the full range of voltage from negative five to five. So I'm gonna turn this off. So that part's done. But why would we wanna do that? I mean, doesn't tempo input just change the tempo? Well, not exactly. We can change what it means using the setup menu if we go to page three. Now here there's only four options. And the default is number two. This is single clock advance mode. So basically, if you stick a pulse 
going in here, every time it receives a pulse, it'll advance the sequencer one step. That's the default. Option one is pretty straightforward, and that's if you just want to modulate this knob and you want to have your tempo kind of go up and down, you could plug like an LFO into here to control how much it moves. I made a similar patch to that using the Matriarch in a different video. I'll put the link in the description. So that ebbing and flowing of tempo is called Tempo Rubato. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's my best attempt at it. Option three is analog clock. It's basically a way to sync the tempo with another analog clock source. It's especially useful if you get in there and change some other settings, and it's basically for syncing with specific other external gear that might use different types of clocks. It's good to know it's here, just in case, say you have an older drum machine or something, but I'm not gonna get too much into that because I wanna stay focused on the mother. Now option four, this is the last and final option for the tempo input jack. That's where the magic happens. This is called Step Address CV Mode, and that's what we're gonna to use today. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to option four. Notice how the green light changes, and then I'm gonna exit the setup mode. So right now, the big changes that I've made from the default settings are I've changed the assign output to random voltage. I've turned off option five on page eight, which, is, which allows the tempo input jack to to accept the full range of voltage from negative five to positive five. And then I've gone into page three and changed it to option four, which is step address CV mode. So what this does is it takes the entire range of voltage, in this case, negative five to five, and divides it evenly by the number of steps in the sequence. And that's why we set our voltage at the beginning from negative five to five. So we have a total of 10 volts total. For the sake of easy math, let's say we had a 10 step sequence. Depending on the amount of voltage that went in here, that would decide which step went in. So if it sounded a voltage between negative five and negative four, the first step would sound. If the voltage passed negative four into the range of negative four and negative three, the second step would sound, and so on and so forth. Each step sounds when one of its thresholds on the top or the bottom is crossed. So you don't even really need a stepped voltage. In fact, if the voltage was moving smoothly, that would actually make it even more random. So to create a random sequence that's quantized, all you need to do is program a sequence using the notes that you want. And because we're gonna be sending in voltage here, it's gonna play it randomly. I programmed in G minor, and I programmed in three octaves of it. So let's listen to that without any modulation. That's the G minor scale going up a few octaves. Now, just so you can hear what this does, let's go from a triangle out, and I'll run it through the oscilloscope. We'll lower our rate, and we're gonna plug this into the tempo. Now, when we start our sequence, as this goes up, it's gonna continually cross thresholds, and every time it crosses a new threshold, the corresponding step in the sequence will sound. Remember our VC mix? With nothing plugged in, it just gives us a range of zero all the way up to five that we can kind of control. This is how it affects our sequence. Pretty cool stuff. But notice what happens when we plug in the assign output. Nothing happens. Kind of starts, but it doesn't. If I unplug it from the tempo input, it plays just fine. Now the reason for that is because it only moves when it's so it's kind of like a paradox where the assigned output random voltage doesn't come through unless the sequencer's playing. 
and the tempo input jack doesn't move the sequence along unless it's receiving voltage. So it's this kind of thing of nothing's getting it started. So the workaround I came up for, for that is to use our LFO in a square wave and to continually run and stop it. Because if you push this button, it will attempt to start the sequence and give out at least one random voltage. So we're going to go out of our square and, in it, and into our run stop. And you have to push it a few times to kind of get it going. So in this case, the LFO rate is actually setting our tempo because that's what, by hitting run stop, it's creating the random voltage, which then goes into the tempo input jack to create the step address mode and move it forward. But the result is a sequence that is playing notes that I've programmed in in completely random order. Pretty cool stuff. So let's take a look at something else cool you can do with it using the LFO. I'm going to create a totally new sequence, and this time I'm going to play a C minor chord. Let's listen to what that sounds like. And I'm going to send my triangle LFO into the tempo, into the step address CV mode. So now you know how and when you might want to use different tempo input settings from the setup mode on page 3, and why and how you might use different settings for the tempo input range on page 8 of the global settings. I hope you found this video inspirational and enjoy making some cool patterns. Let me know what you think in the comments section and what you come up with. The next three videos, I'm going to take a deep dive into the sequencer, I'm going to talk about the keyboard mode and the step mode for creating patterns. And after that, we'll do some more stuff with the patch bay. Eventually, I'm going to start adding external modules. I've got a lot planned. And of course, I expect I might decide to take some detours along the way if I come across something cool. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.